So many of you have asked me about my opinion on MSCI. It's a high quality company and it went down over 11%, I believe over 13% actually on earnings and it went down around 2.5% the other day. And their earnings were actually really, I mean, not really bad at all. I mean, yes, they did miss on revenue, but they did beat on EPS. Their guidance wasn't bad at all. Their expenses were not anything crazy. Yet the stock made a massive, massive down move. And this is again, a very high quality company. Many of you really like it and whenever we have such big moves we tend to have the tendency to just go and buy the dip because they got 10% cheaper while maybe the company actually maybe got 10% less expensive and maybe it's still expensive despite a 10% or an 11% down move and this is what I'm gonna try to assess in today's video try to assess the valuation of MSCI and try to find out if it's undervalued at such prices or not now if you're not familiar with MSCI it's mainly one of the best businesses you could ever, you know, a dream of owning. It has one of the best moats you could ever heard of. Most of the revenues, 57% is from the index. I'm sure you've seen many ETFs and indexes like, you know, the iShares, MSCI, World ETF and all kind of other MSCI ETFs. I'm sure you've seen them many, many times and they make a lot of revenue from that for basically doing nothing, over 57%. 25% is actually from analytics and data and a couple of other things. And 11% is from ESG. Around 75% of their entire revenue is pretty much recurring subscription. Very high margin revenue. 23% is asset-based fees, which is also pretty close to recurring. And only 2% of their entire revenue is pretty much non recurring you know uh, revenues and they are experiencing a lot of growth in the whole thing around the esg climate and all these type of things which i'm not a big fan of but this is you know it's something that's trending now they you know they're increasing your revenues a lot from it if you look at their uh, guidance they expect mid to high 20s in terms of the esg and climate type of growth it's not their highest profitable industry their highest profitable one is actually around the indexes and the analytics which are still growing but they are not growing nowhere close to where they have growing in ESG and climate. Now, maybe this will change if we have a new president in 2024, which is not a big fan of, of ESG and climate. Maybe we see some of changes and maybe we see some of a slowdown in the growth that these companies has been experiencing. But this will be remained uh, to be seen. And the company also has, you know, very high retention rates, over 96 to 95 percent retention rate. This is very very high for any company so everything we looked at so far is pretty amazing and you might be asking yourself how does this even justify such a move for a company is down around 13 14 percent i mean everything we looked at is amazing why is the company going down and in my personal opinion it has a lot to do with the valuation because in the stock market it's not what you buy it's not about buying the highest quality company you can find it's how much you're paying for this quality many people for example they skip a lot of companies because they are low quality because they don't have any moat because they're cyclical you know because they don't have high return on invested capital but they don't really look at how much are we paying for that is the stock priced into perfection or is it priced in like it's going out of business and in case of msci it was actually priced into absolute perfection and any tiny slowdown in any of their metric is of course going to cause a massive down move in the price and the company price to the big down move, it was trading at 43 times forward earnings, not trailing. Trailing, it was around 55 times trailing earnings. It was trading around 42 times forward earning. It was priced into perfection. Even if they grew a half a percent less than expected, the stock is going to go down. And this is something you have to pay attention to, to never overpay for quality. Always look at what kind of quality you're getting for how much you're actually paying. And after that, it went to around 34 times forward earning. The mean for the company Company is around 33 times and the low is around 15 times so we're close to the mean but we're nowhere close to the low and the company is starting to line up with pretty good you know historical metrics but if we try to compare 
MSCI with something like SPGI with S&P Global, they kind of have, you know, the similar business model. Although SPGI is more in credit rating, but they also have the S&P index and they have the data and analytics. They have the ESG division, just like MSCI actually has. And SPGI is also growing and, you know, it's a pretty amazing company with a wide moat. They own many other companies and it's trading around 27 times forward earnings. Now, even after this massive down move in MSCI, is still trading around 34 35 times earnings so it's still trading much much higher than where you know something like spgi is actually trading and in my personal opinion this is really not justified although yes you know msei has higher margins than spgi and it's always been trading higher i mean if you look at it but in my opinion it's just it's just i believe there's a the gap that needs to be narrowed and it will most likely be narrowed in the future it was a much wider gap where it was trading at 63 times forward earnings in 2021 and this gap has actually got you know closer and closer together and i believe this is will most you know likely uh, continue but despite looking at such high you know kind of metrics as i said before msci is a high quality company they have over you know 27 28 percent return on capital very high return on capital and this is something you know uh, very uh, amazing for the company they also return value to shareholders in terms of buybacks they also have a growing dividend Evident, but I like the buybacks. You could see their shares outstanding, going from 116 to around 81 over the years. And they are committed to those buybacks and they keep doing them pretty much every single year. Now, there's two ways I actually assessed the valuation for MSCI. And this is something hard to do because whenever you're trying to value a high quality company, you have to try to take all the qualities and all the moat into consideration, which is very, very hard to do. So first, I actually tried to, fa to value MSCI. Like I try to value just any stock that I normally do here on the YouTube channel. And I just use the analyst estimates of 9% revenue growth for the company. I used the 42% net income margin, which they do have 42%. I used 30 times earnings, even though, you know, MSCI is now uh, actually trading around 34 times earnings, but I thought maybe the growth could be a little bit slower. I would not want to bet on the highest case scenario. I would bet on the mid case scenario to low case scenario. And the mean is 33 times. So I think 30 times earnings is fair. And using all these numbers with a 2% yearly buyback i only got 25 percent on the upside or only five percent you know compounded every single year for the next five years which really made no sense to me at all but this is a mistake i've done pretty much with every single one of these companies where it's a high quality company i try to value it like any stock and then you know for some reason i miss it and then it just goes up a lot so i have another way i actually valued msci if you're actually a very long-term investor and you just dying to buy a small stake in msci to dollar cost average down i would personally buy msci around 375 dollars or lower how did i get that i just got the billion dollars of net income that's expected for them in 2023 i used it times 30 forward pe so 30 times forward earnings i got 30 billion dollars in terms of a market cap i divided it by the shares outstanding i got 375 dollars and funny enough there seems to be some type of support around the $377 range. So if I was dying to buy a stake in MSCI, although I would rather buy SPGI over MSCI, but if I had to buy MSCI and I just want to hold it forever and let it compound and all these kind of things, I would not be paying more than $375 per share for MSCI. No financial advice, but if I was dying to buy a stake in MSCI, I would not be paying more than $375 per share. I would also start dollar cost averaging down, you know, below that I would open a small position and then try to dollar cost average down. Maybe it goes back to pre pandemic around, you know, 389 or 375. So you have to leave a lot of room to add. But in my valuation model, I would not be paying more than $375 per share. And if I was so forced between MSCI and SPGI, I would choose S&P Global over MSCI. So this was my video for today. I, I hope it was helpful. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I hope to see you in another video.